there are some really common mistakes that you can make with your conclusions so that they end up reading poorly, much like I said with introductions. And if you haven't seen that video, maybe you want to go and watch that and then come back. But I'm going to show you how to make sure that you don't fall into those traps and make sure that your conclusions read well. Progress from specifics to context. In your conclusion, you should start to build back out from the detail that you were in, in the main body of your text. You're supposed to summarise, but don't just repeat everything that you've said in a bullet point form. Instead, see if you can start to weave a thread through everything that you've said that maybe the re reader didn't realise while they were reading the individual paragraphs. The evidence presented supports the conclusion that bed nets are the most cost-effective intervention to prevent the spread of malaria. If they are successful in reducing the infection rate by just 15%, the lives of tens of thousands of people will be improved each year. Avoid loose generalisms. Your conclusion should bring context to the rest of your essay, but if you finish off with statements that are too vague, you risk undermining the academic rigour of everything you've presented up until that point. Further work must be done. You'll have the same problem if you try to make your conclusion sound overly impactful. If you're summarising the treatments for a condition, you probably haven't found a way towards a cure that treats every single type of that disease. With a better understanding of how this mutation causes the condition, eventually we'll be able to cure all related conditions. And this will bring us one step closer to living in a world with not only no more inherited disease, but no more disease overall. Making your statements overly general like this makes it sound like you haven't really thought very deeply about what you're trying to say. Remember, you don't convince people by over-exaggerating the truth. You convince people by presenting the truth in a simple way so that they have no choice but to accept that that is true. No new facts. We've said that you shouldn't be too general at the end. Yes, provide context, but make sure it's not too broad. Don't put that into practice by focusing on one very specific piece of context. Thus, by eradicating this virus, the World Health Organization estimates the world economy will be improved by several billion dollars every year through less spending on healthcare. Of course, eradicating this disease could open up a new ecological niche for another virus that can mutate to bind to the same receptor as the virus we've just wiped out. Such a virus might bind to this receptor. Doing that at the very end when they're thinking about the topic you've presented gives them too much new information to deal with and it sounds like you're starting a new essay instead. So the three themes from this video then are first, progress from the details of your essay back to the context for it. Secondly, avoid being overly vague or overly general because it undermines the scientific rigour you went to if you say things that you can't support. And thirdly, Balance the need for context with the need not to confuse your reader with too many new facts that they're not in a position to expect. For more advice on how to improve your writing, drop me an email and we can have an appointment. Or come along to one of the open classes that I run here in the Macmillan Reading Room. And you can find all of the details for those on the Student Learning Services website.